This is 730T with Re. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm literally stranded in a flooding canal. He's like, oh, I hope you don't mind. Um, I invited my friends. When he pulls up to pick me up, he's in a weird looking van. Re is spilling all the tea. Hello, everyone, and welcome to 730T with Re. How are you guys all doing this week? I know I'm doing well. I was a little bit up and down, not going to lie, but it's just because I am on my little monthly present, so all my hormones are raging, but (laughs) other than that, I have been trying to get my mental health on track. Not that it's been bad necessarily, but I've just been going through so many ups and downs which, you know, I mean, that happens, it's normal, like, that's life, but I've been trying to kind of, like, I guess reinvent myself for the summer. Every single time a season changes, I'm always, like, trying to completely reinvent myself and manifest something new for the whole season change, so now that summer's really happening and shifting and everything, I think I'm just trying to make sure that I feel happy this whole season and um, feel like I am at a brand new fresh start, that I feel cleaned out and cleared. You know, when you're just kind of like in a mood to re-cleanse yourself, whether it's like you re-cleanse your space or you re-cleanse your mind or, you know, rethink who you're surrounding yourself with, stuff like that, and um, uh, what type of job you're at, what type of place you're in, you know? So I'm just in that type of energy right now where I'm trying to make sure that I reconnect with myself. So I started going for daily walks, and I've been really loving it. I feel like it's been helping with my mental health and making me feel more confident. And it also has um, really impacted kind of like my energy levels. I feel like I had like a huge energy boost since I've started walking. And I just like will walk around the neighborhood three miles daily. Um, There were like two days that I kind of missed, but it was because one of the days I had a whole bunch of doctor's appointments, which um, that went crazy because I went to the allergist. Now, if you know me, you know that I have a bunch of allergies, (laughs) like literally a bunch. And so the other day I went to go to the allergist and they um, did all of these allergy plates on both of my arms. So one of my arms, they did um, like a bunch of different pollen extracts on my arm combined with um, tree extracts, grass, things like that, like basically a lot of outdoor stuff. And then they also did uh, peanuts and sesame seeds on that arm. So uh, that was the first arm. The second arm was like they did a bunch of molds and they did dust and they also did like animal extracts things like that like cats right so on the first arm with all of the outdoorsy stuff i got mostly threes and fours and so those levels are very high actually um threes and fours are like the highest ones if you have those levels you're like it's concerning you know like it's EpiPen level, like you need an EpiPen. (laughs) Um, So yeah, my whole arm uh, got hives, which the allergist himself said was a very remarkable case. So he highly recommended that I do immunity shots. Um, He said that it, like I'm a perfect candidate for that. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, and on my other arm with the dust and all of that stuff and the molds and the animal stuff. So I'm highly allergic to cats and the mold I tested negative for, which is great. Like I wasn't allergic to any of the molds. I didn't even react to them really, but I did react highly to dust as well, which I knew (laughs) my whole life. Like the pollen allergy has always been bad and the dust allergy has always been bad. So because both are so bad, 
um, I've been congested for years, right? Um, I have not breathed properly since I was like a kid, if I'm being honest. And that sounds crazy, but it's just kind of true. Like, I don't really remember what it's like to wake up and your airways are cleared. Like, I wake up congested daily and that's just my day to day. That's my routine. I'm just used to it at this point. I'm congested right now, even speaking. Like, that is my natural, <laughs> um, that's my body. That's the way it works. And it's just because of everything I'm allergic to. So, I'll give you, um, quick little examples you know like I could wake up in the morning and I literally sometimes I'll just have a whole bunch of mucus on my chest like it that's how it feels um and throughout the day it gets back to normal because pollen settles by the time it's afternoon now that's when it's spring summer and fall so during those seasons is when a lot of that outdoor activity is happening so that's usually when my allergies, like the symptoms are going to be the worst in those seasons. But the thing is, I'm kind of always screwed because of my dust allergies. So even when I'm indoors in the winter season, in the winter, you put on a heater and with the heater, dust comes out of the heater and builds up. So I'm kind of fucked anyways. And that sounds like sad, but it just is true. Um, and that's what the allergist was telling me. Um, I had him check up my nose as well because I had explained to him about how I'm usually congested daily and he confirmed, he was like, yeah, um, it makes sense because your, uh, nose, the way it, it is, like everything's naturally swollen, uh, because you're congested daily. And I'm like, yeah, that would make sense. So yeah. Everything that I had felt and been experiencing and explaining to everyone was confirmed because the last time I had went to an allergist was in high school. So I wanted to reconfirm that to make sure that I wasn't going crazy. But I knew that all of the things that I was experiencing all had to do with allergies. I just didn't realize it got this much worse. It was always bad, but it's just way worse now because having my whole arm as threes and fours is very, very rare. So yeah, I'm kind of a rare case, but I'm excited to be put on the immunity shot soon. So yeah, I'm trying to just get my health right. As I was telling you guys, um, I'm trying to get my mental health right and also my physical health. So now I've got EpiPens, I've got a new inhaler, I've got stronger allergy meds, and I've got um, two different types of nasal sprays that are much stronger than the one I usually use. So yeah, I'm excited. I am. Because maybe someday I'll be able to wake up and breathe clearly. So I'm hoping that's the case. But aside from all of that, I've been having fun. I got to go out this weekend with my sister. That was a fun time. And I actually got a few little stories because I brought my little anonymous book with me to try and get stories out of some people or little anonymous secrets. So I got a few of those when I was out. And um, I also got to hang out with my best friend, Tyler. We went to grab food somewhere and John was away on, um, what's it? He went on a little, like, family getaway. So I didn't get to hang out with him this weekend, but he's back now. So I'm literally going to be sleeping over tomorrow. So I'm excited to see my man. I miss him so much. I love that man. But yeah, that's my life lately. Anyways, I'm excited for today's episode because it's another Tea Droplets episode. So we're going to be getting into that. And if you are new here and you don't know what Tea Droplets is, Tea Droplets is basically this little segment that I do where people send in um, like short stories, like very, very short. Like it could be literally a few sentences long 
where you just tell me like an anonymous secret, like a quick little blurb. So that's what tea droplets are. They're like little pocket sized stories. So yeah, uh, we're going to be getting into those. And before I do, I'm also going to remind you what this podcast is about. And in case you're new here, you know, it definitely helps to know what it's about. So this podcast is all about spilling tea and sharing your deepest, darkest secrets. So if you have any tea to spill, DM me on Instagram at 730 with re And you spell that 730-T-E-A-W-I-T-H-R-I-E. Or you can DM me on my main Instagram account at Rihanna Flores and you spell that R-I-E-A-N-N-A-F-L-O-R-E-S. And if you wish to be anonymous, please let me know. Your story should be up to 500 words or less. And if you want to send an audio voice message in instead of typing out your story, just please keep it up to five minutes max. Thank you. Now we're going to get into our first little tea droplet that was shared by our first sipper. So they actually talked about their shitty ex-boyfriend and they said, My ex-boyfriend broke up with me after being diagnosed with Shiari malformation and being let go from a job. I had to move back home. He always accused me of cheating, but he was the one that was doing it. He also ended up hitting me on the top of my head really hard and I called the cops on him and he went to jail. Oh my god, this is fucking crazy. Hold on, I gotta search up what Shiari malfunction is. This is my first time reading this uh, little blurb, so that's why I have to go and search it up, so I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back and now that I know what it is and now that I know that I completely said the word wrong because I, I just like played back what I was just recording and I said malfunction and it's Shari mal in malformation. Oh my god, I can't say Shari malformation. Oh my god. Okay, so it's basically um this condition where the lower part of the brain pushes down into the spinal canal so there's certain activities that people can't participate in like wrestling and things like that where you can easily like kind of hurt your brain further like get your head hurt and stuff like that like it could really affect and damage your brain apparently or like the way your head is because it's really just where your, um, I don't know, it's, my, it's it's the way that your skull is set up. So it can be dangerous if you um, damage any part of that in a sport or something. I don't really think I explained that like amazingly, but you know, I'm, ju- I'm just reading what I'm seeing off Google. But yeah, that's basically what it is. So the fact that he fucking like hit you on top of your head really hard knowing that you had that is so crazy like what the fuck and i mean i'm so glad that you called the cops on him and that he went to jail but wow that that's really crazy and it's so fucked up that he broke up with you because of it and because he got let go from a job and all this shit like i can't <sighs> Or wait, I'm a little confused. Did you mean that you got let go from the job and then he broke up with you? Or are you saying that like he also um, got let go from a job and broke up with you because he was upset with himself? Either way, like him like breaking up with you over things that you kind of like both of those things you really can't control. Like... Both of those things you cannot control at all. So it's like, why is he taking it out on you? And just whatever. Honestly, it's not even a big loss. Like, I'm glad that he's out of your life. Like, it sounds like you needed to lose him. Because it sounds like he was already crazy as it is. Especially the fact that he would always accuse you of cheating. Meanwhile, he was the one doing it. And then he hit you really hard in the head. Like, knowing that you you have Shiari uh, malformation. I really hope I'm saying that right. But, um, ew, what a little fuck. Fuck him. You're way better off. I am so glad that you guys are over. And, yeah, on to the next little blurb because, ew, this is irritating me for her. 
that he really did all of that. That's like the audacity is so crazy. <laughs> it really is. Anyways, um, sipper number two also talks about a boyfriend. And this boyfriend that she talks about is also an asshole. So it says, My boyfriend in college broke up with me because I had just gotten out of the ICU with sepsis. And he felt I wasn't dedicating enough time to our relationship. Okay, let me search up what sepsis is. Okay, I am now on Google, and it says that sepsis is a serious condition in which the body responds improperly to an infection. Okay, so it's basically like this life-threatening type of condition where your body is like an extreme reaction to an infection. Like your body's immune system is going crazy. And it's going crazy because it's like not responding properly to this infection. Like it doesn't know how to fight it the proper way. So that's basically what it is. So now that I understand that, I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with these men out here? Like, because even the story before this, like, why are boyfriends breaking up with their girlfriends after finding out about like a condition i just don't understand why there's like m there's significant others or men out there that really think that this is okay to do the crazier part like the r the real audacity here is the fact that he was all like oh yeah i feel like you weren't dedicating enough time to our relationship you literally have sepsis. Like, what the fuck does he expect you to do? You know what I mean? The fact that, I mean, you were literally in the ICU and he has the audacity to be like, oh, you weren't dedicating enough time to our relationship. Like, I know you were in the ICU and you have sepsis, but you just weren't dedicating enough. That is so fucking ridiculous to me. Do people even hear themselves? Like, I just don't understand why he thinks this shit is okay to d why would anyone like I <laughs> only men bro fucking hate men when i hear shit like this like i j i get tired listening to it not tired of you telling me because i love when you guys tell me stories but like i'm tired of this bullshit that men do like what the fuck anyways on to the next story so our next sipper talks about feeling like they wasted their college years. They basically said, um, I went to school for five years and 50k later to become a nurse and I hate it. Now that's some tea. Sip. That's what they put. So I know this is like a really short little blurb, but I wanted to include it because I felt like this was a very relatable and it's a small statement and it's simple. But it's so true. There's so many people that will go to college or school or wherever they go, right? And it's like they go there all that time, they spend all that money, and they feel like they wasted it or they feel like, wow, what was the point of this if I hate my job now? But the thing is, if you have done this and you're at a job and you hate it after doing all of those years of schooling i just want you to know like it's not always a waste of time because it's better to know that at least you went and you tried something and now you know for sure that it's not something you want to do um and also you still have the experience and i feel like everything happens for a reason and it's like even if you don't end up with that career you still have the the skill set and the knowledge that you learned through all of those years that you might need for something else in your life and you just never know so it's good that you still went even if it doesn't feel like it at the moment because you know there's a higher purpose and who knows if you end up in like another career path uh compared to like what you went for Sometimes uh, maybe things that you learned in um, the, the original career path, career path that you were going for, sometimes that same kind of skill set or knowledge might come up in a different one too that maybe someone else doesn't have that you have because you learned it from a different career. You never know. So I just thought this would be like 
kind of important to talk about. I just figured why not in case there's anyone out there that's kind of feeling that way as if they um, wasted a bunch of school years. Just know that it's really like and truly not always a waste. Sometimes you really just still get something out of it and you should appreciate that. Take it for what it is. So yeah, that's my tea. Anyways, we're going to get into the next thing that someone shared. So someone said, sipper number four said, when I was in college, I had a situationship with one of the basketball coaches. So this one, like, I was like, oh my God, girl, you are so messy. I don't know who wrote this, but so messy. I like love it, but I'm also like, ooh, girl, um, it makes me curious because I'm like, I want to know how much older they were, this coach. Like, I'm wondering if they were, like, a lot older or if they were, like, closer in age to you. Because this kind of reminds me of, I had this sweet mate my senior year of college, and she actually was in a sim- similar thing. So, she played um, softball or whatever, and she was having a situationship with her coach too, but he was literally only a few years older than her, so it didn't really matter, but they had to keep it on the down low. So it just reminds me like that, like they had to keep that whole thing low key and everyone could low key feel the tension between them. Like it was kind of obvious that something was happening. So yeah, honestly, I feel like there's nothing that wrong with this if they're like close in age to you. I would only see something wrong with it if it was like they were significantly older. But I also think, I mean, this kind of stuff, when people freak out about it, I don't think there should be like that much of a freak out if they're close in age and if they're keeping it professional, you know? I think that's what really matters is just how you go about it as long as it's in a professional manner, you know? That's my take on it. Anyways, we're going to get into the last and final little story that was shared. It was very mini. This person said, sipper number five said, my family has a separate group chat where they talk shit about me. My friend group ghosted me and I've dated only military men. So there's that. I've got more. (laughs) I wish you shared more, honestly, because that... Those are just small little, like, sentences, but I feel like you got tea. Like, I don't- I wish you shared, like, story stories, because it seems like you got a lot to say in just that small little blurb. Um, going off on the- your family having a separate group chat where they talk shit about you, I want to know how you found that out. Like, was it opened on someone's phone, or- are you suspecting this? Like, I want to know so badly because that's so fucked up. Like, if my family had a separate group chat where they just talk shit about only me, I'm just like, that's crazy. Also, honestly, the only positive way I'd see this is it's like, they really made a whole group chat just to talk about you, bitch. They're a fan. Fuck them. They're a fan. Uh, They're a fan. Um, and the second thing that you talked about, you mentioned that your friend group ghosted you. That's crazy. Who has the time to do that in that way? Why didn't they just talk to you about it? I don't I just hate that. Like, ghosting in general, I really do actually hate because it's like you really don't want to put in the effort to talk Like, you don't want to just communicate. I honestly think it takes more effort to ghost someone. And maybe that's arguable because, like, yeah, you're just not talking to them anymore. But I actually think that takes more effort because you're sitting there with your guilt because you ghosted someone and you're sitting there overthinking, like, oh, like, well, what if I sound mean or what if I sound this or what if I sound that? like stressing about whether or not to confront someone so you just ghost them it's so much easier to just talk it out and you get your feelings out and then you could just stop talking after because you got your feelings out i don't think it makes any sense to just completely ghost someone with like no explanation it's just so stupid to me it's so high school like stop living in the past hate that 
Um, and the last thing that you said, you said, I've only dated military men. So there's that girl. I've heard so many stories about military men. They are fucking crazy, absolutely crazy. And I don't want to stereotype all of them because, you know, like not all of them are bad, but like most of them are, (laughs) but the ones that I've heard about from friends and friends of friends, a lot of them cheat, like, and that's just true. Like a lot of them cheat. A lot of them got issues. A lot of them are kind of weird. So girl, I would have loved to hear some more stories about that in detail so if you got any share them and if any of you have stories on that as well you guys could also share like more stories i am always down for more stories so send as many as any of you would like truthfully but yeah that was our last and final little blurb our little sipper tea droplet so We're going to be closing out this episode with our sound healing session. So sit back, lie down, relax, shut your eyes, take a deep breath in from your nose and out from your mouth. And I'm going to play. you guys thank you so much for joining today's episode it always means the absolute most to me and if you were new here and you made it this far thank you so much for staying the whole time and listening the whole entire time and i hope you enjoyed it i hope you come back and if you have not subscribed or followed me what are you doing go do that right now absolutely right now And yeah, I hope you guys had a really good time listening. I always appreciate when you guys join and listen to these episodes. So thank you so much for being here. And um, I hope you guys all have the bestest week ever. I love you all so much and goodbye.